Uh, good afternoon. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. All right, shall we reverently move for prayer? Amen. All right. So this morning, Kennard, um talked about fasting. And w- what is a fast? Abstinence. Abstinence. Yes. A special diet. Right? This is what I wanted, wanted to get from that. A fast is a special diet. Right? And like Kunar brought up, you could have total abstinence, but you could also have partial abstinence. All right? And the Lord... One wants us to abstain from evil. Amen? Amen. That's, that's his whole goal. And in order to do that, what Christ does is he opens up Moses and all the prophets. That's how he's going to get us to abstain from evil. How? By showing us the evil. Right? By showing us that the scripture is speaking of all things concerning himself. Right? And in, in imbibing only on the things of Christ, what are we abstaining from? From evil. Right? So... The Bible says, Aramari went over this morning, right here, Christ comes and he goes over Moses and all the prophets. And she says the types and the symbols was to establish their faith. Their faith. Now, another point, another nice principle that Kennard brought out a couple of times is that how many scripture is given for instruction? All, all scripture, right? So therefore, <clears throat> when you go into any story, you, you should be able to see any topic, right? Whether it's, on, whether it's on the surface or whether you have to dig a little deeper, that scripture speaks on that topic. For instance, um, I've been looking into the tiring time a lot, and one of the things the Lord showed me is, um, how many scriptures speak of the tiring time? All. Oh, there's a work we must do in the tiring time, amen? Which scripture teaches us that all stories teach the tiring time? I know. Hebrews 11. By faith, what did Noah do? He worked. worked. By faith, what did Abraham do? By faith, what did Joseph do? Every single story in the Bible teaches you the tiring time. He takes it from the beginning, takes it all the way to the end, and every single one of them did a work. Right? Just, Just go over that chapter. Look it over. All right? By faith, he offered. By faith, he moved. By faith, he d- just look at it. Noah Amen. By faith, preach. Every single story in the Bible teaches you the tiring time. Amen. Therefore, every single story in the Bible should teach you the Sabbath. And every single story in the Bible should teach you of the resurrection, the death and resurrection. Amen. This is what Christ is bringing our mind to. This is what I want to understand. So I'm going to share some thoughts right now to show how this is happening. The Lord is really opening the scriptures. And one of the things we, we came from our camp meeting understanding is the building of the sanctuary. sanctuary. And from the, not every story in the Bible teaches the building of the sanctuary. That's what I want to bring out. Amen? Amen. All right. It's, it's only going to give us new details on what the building of the sanctuary is. Amen? Amen? And it's going to show you how it all points to the cross. It all points to Christ. All right? So, um, this first part of notes deals with the Solomon's temple. Okay? It says, simultaneously with what? Preparation, Preparation of wood and stone, the task uh, to which task many thousands were bending their energies. The manufacture of the furnishings of the temple was steadily progressing under the leadership of Hiram of Tyre, a cunning man endued with understanding, skillful to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in iron, and in stone, and in timber, and in purple, and in fine linen, and in crimson. So what I want to pull out from there is that in this prep, uh, this, this, there must be a preparation for the building of the sanctuary. Amen? Amen. Right? And this preparation is a gathering of wood and stone. 
And the Lord showed us that right now we should be building the temple. So where were we gathering? Since the fifth day of the fourth month. We've been gathering wood and stone. And then we came to this point, And the Lord says, okay, now time to build. Amen? So, um, also, yeah, this, 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 these notes could go in all sorts of directions. So I'm going to try to keep a line. right? I know there's, there's going to be many thoughts. But I'm going to try to keep a line, okay, so that, so that we can at least come away with, 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 with a thought, okay, a, 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 a thread. Amen? Amen? All right. But there is many thoughts that's going to come out of this, okay? So I'm going to try to get through it. Next quote, PK 35.3. Thus, the building on, monks, on Mount Moriah was noiseless, noiselessly operated with stone made ready, before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. The beautiful fittings were what? Perfected according to what? The pattern committed by David to his son. So the point that I'm making is right here, fifth day of the fourth month, the Lord began to commit to us a pattern. Right? Because David is Christ. Amen? And the Lord is giving us the pattern. And once we get the pattern, then we have to go gather wood and stone for this building. Right? And when we came to this point, the Lord begins to say, the Lord says, build. Right? This is, this is the command we know right now we have to build the temple. So, next quote. The spot on which the temple was built had long been regarded as a consecrated place. It was here that what? What does it say? Who? Abraham, the father of the faithful, had revealed his what? Willingness. willingness. So what should we be revealing now? Our willingness to, to build. Amen? All right. Um, to sacrifice his only son in obedience to the command of Jehovah. Here God renewed with Abraham the covenant of blessing, which included the glorious messianic promise to the human race of deliverance through the sacrifice of the Son of the Most High. So deliverance comes through the cross. Amen? Here it was, it was that when David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings to stay the avenging sword of the destroying angel, God what? Answered him by fire from heaven. So where, where we're building the temple now is where God is going to do what? Bring down? Bring down the fire. But before the fire comes down, the temple must be built. Amen? I, brought, I put this in here to show that the Lord connected Mount Moriah with the building of the temple. So which story should show the building of the temple? Abraham killing Isaac. Right? This is the point I want to make. Right? Because all scripture is given for instruction. Amen? And right away, she ties Mount Moriah with the building of the temple. And she says that's where Abraham did a particular work. And that's where Solomon is now doing a particular work. Right? Let's continue. It says, It came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were one to make one sound to be heard in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house of the Lord was what? Filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God now the temple should be built at the midnight cry amen so this quote tells me that when the temple is built there is a, a loud trumpet right and it says that when this trumpet is blown what comes down a cloud right Glory. Amen. Amen. Right. Triumphal entry. Amen. So, but it says another thing. It says the ministers could not minister. That's nice. It is a triumphal entry. The cloud was all the people saying, Abraham was saying, Adam was saying, and the, the, the priests and the they couldn't minister. Amen. While the people right? were doing that, they couldn't minister. That's nice. Okay. Praise God. It says, for the glory of the Lord fill the house. So right here at the midnight cry, the glory of the Lord is going to fill the house. Amen? And then it says, now also, 
Think about what Romari represented, right? The breaking of the bread. This is what the cloud and the breaking of the bread is synonymous. We'll see that. Right? So, this is what I like. Realizing the significance of the cloud. Solomon declared, the Lord had said that he would dwell in thick darkness. What, is, what did Solomon get? He got a revelation, right? Realizing the significant, what, 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 the word significance come from the word what? Sign. Sign. The two on the walk to Emmaus, what did Christ give them? Sign. He opened, he broke the bread and they saw his hands, Amen. right? They received a sign. Right here, there should be a sign, right? And Kanawa went and he says part of it is judgment, right? But it says the Lord, Solomon says the Lord dwell in thick Darkness. Verse, the next one, it says, But I have built what? An house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. Now, which verse is Solomon fulfilling when he says that? I know we know it, we just don't think about it. Not 25. Well, I mean, Christ fulfills that. I'm saying Solomon. He's fulfilling a particular verse. We sing it all the time. He is my God, and I'll what? I'll prepare him, man. What did Solomon just prepare? Solomon is fulfilling that song. Right? Solomon says right here, he prepares the Lord, and... So what, does the, what, story, what the Red Sea then teaches you about what? The building of the temple. Just bring them together. Right? So Solomon is fulfilling the words of that song, right? But Solomon is at the end to some effect while they were at the beginning. So we could also see that, right? Solomon is at the point where all things were gathered and he built. But they were, at the, they were, they were just born. It was the birth of the Hebrew nation. So what they say? I will prepare him a house, right? Solomon is fulfilling that. He prepared the Lord a house. And what the Lord is going to come and fill the house. Amen? All right. So continuing on. Until Solomon did that, he had nowhere to lay his head. No. So Solomon gave him a place to lay his head. A dwelling place. Amen. All right. The point, of, the, what I want us to see from this is, honestly, more so that we can trust the scriptures. Right? The Lord is really opening up the scriptures. And we can trust the scriptures. We must have faith in what the Lord is teaching us. We must have faith. And the way to increase faith is by the word. Amen? All right. And we must see that we're living the word even now. All right. So continuing on. Exodus 15 and verse 2, we talked about that already. Continue on. Solomon then what? Nailed upon the platform. He bowed down. Amen? And in hearing all the people offered the dedicatory Prayer. So right here from the midnight cry is the temple dedication. Amen. It's the dedication of the temple. It says, while the congregation was bowed with their faces to the ground. Go to the next quote. As Solomon ended his what? Okay. So from the midnight cry onward, what, what are we to do? Pray. What is 144,000 doing in the seven last plagues? Pray. They're praying, right? So this whole time is prayer. And the Bible says, <clears throat> as Solomon ended his prayer, what happened? Fire. 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 Amen, at the dawn. Because it's the seventh plague. Right? Fire comes down from heaven. Amen? In answer to Solomon's prayer. Amen. Then it says, and consume the burnt offering and what? And there's a nice text where it says the Lord has prepared himself a sacrifice in Zechariah. Right? This is the cons- consummation of the wicked. That's what it's teaching. Right? It says, but at the same time it's light entering into the hearts of the people of God. Amen? Alright. The priest could not enter the temple because the glory of the Lord had what? So the same thing in the beginning, they couldn't enter when the cloud came down. When you come down to the end, they still can't. Because why? 
Righteousness, justification by faith is a work of God in what? Humbling men to the dust, Solomon and the whole congregation was bowing. Mm -hmm. And doing what? Doing for, doing for them what they cannot do for themselves, right? This is, what it, this is a part of what it means that the priest couldn't work. Because it's a fast. It's the Sabbath, right? O -o who works on the Sabbath, Ellen White tells us? God, he answers most of our prayers. Because Solomon was, Solomon was seeking his choicest blessings in this prayer, Right? And so they couldn't work because the cloud was there. And at the end, the fire came down. It, it, it's the same principle of light exceeding bright light all over again. Go ahead. The first, the, the first one, it says, it said that a cloud. cloud came down. That's mm -hmm. a symbol. But then in PK 45, it says that the glory, the glory of the, 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 glory the Lord filled the temple. Amen. Now it's... Now it's fully seen out. Amen. Amen. The first one is, 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 a, is a symbol. The Amen. Next one is the fullness of it. Same principle, yeah. right? It's the same thing. Amen. He's going to give them what they want to see. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna see in our glory the midnight yeah. cry. And yes. they're, now they're going to have to show, do we really want this? They're going to demonstrate we didn't care whether it was outward glory yeah. or inward glory. We, we, we don't want this. Mercy. The Lord's going to give them what they, they're looking for. The fruit of their own thoughts. Yeah. All right. So there was, they bowed in the beginning. And then we're going to, if we continue reading this quote, it says, when all the children saw the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves, right, with their faces to the ground upon the pavement. So there is a bowing there at the dawn. Now, this goes back to um, the breaking of the bread here and the breaking of the bread at the dawn, right? The Lord is just showing us that he's just going to repeat these things. He broke bread from the fifth day of the fourth month. And when we come to the midnight cry, we have to recognize the sign. Right? Because why? Because he's going to do it again at the end. Right? It's all about us understanding God's voice. This is, this is the point that we have to understand his voice. This, these works is him speaking. Right? Continuing on. Drop down to the next quote. It says, the king had done what? everything within his power. Amen? To encourage the people to give themselves wholly to God and to his service and to magnify his holy name. And now once more, as at Gibeon, early in his reign, Israel's ruler was given evidence of divine what? Acceptance and blessings. In the night vision, the Lord appeared to him with a message, I have heard thy prayer and have what? Chosen you. This is what he's teaching. That he's chosen you and I to be his house. To go forward and do the work for the world. Right? But first, a work must be done where? This is what he says here. Solomon did all that he could to do what? Encourage whom? Yeah. The church. Yeah. To encourage the people to give themselves to God. Right? And then he prayed. And then God answered his then God answered his prayer. Everybody's following? So, your prayer will be answered at the dawn, the 144,000. What do they see? A cloud, right? Okay. So, your prayer is answered here at the dawn. Yeah, the same thing repeats from the dawn. Cloud, fire. Yes, amen. Amen. Walk in the light while you have the light. You just got to follow God's word, right? We have to try to understand these principles that we may be able to see him at every point, right? These, these symbols are not limited. They're not limited. The Lord, in another form, he'll come here. And then in another form. And you have to be able to go on from glory to glory, right? So, now let's look at Mount Moriah. Because Aurea said, you must connect Mount Moriah to the building of the temple. All right. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 13. It says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, I am here. And he said, Take now thy son, thine what? Only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains 
which I will tell thee of. Now we know that the, the final test begins at the midnight cry, right? And this is where the, the, the word comes to Abraham to take his son, his only son, right? And this is key, his only son. <laughs> Amen. You must be a son, right? So, it says, um, verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the what? What did Abraham prepare? What did Solomon prepare? Wood. So what is Abraham going to build? He's going to build the temple, right? So Abraham takes wood, Solomon takes wood, right? So it says, um, verse 4, and on the what day? On the third day, right? So Abraham journeys for one, two, three days. It says, and on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the wood and the fire, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they both went so they went, both of them together. And it came to pass, sorry, and they came to the place which God told them of, and Abraham did what? He built the temple. Amen? And what? Laid the in perfect order. That's what Solomon did, right? Amen. Amen. That's what Christ is doing. And bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him, from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, I am here, here am I. Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do neither do thou anything unto him. For I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up. For a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Now, this, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy goes together, amen? And the spirit of prophecy really puts a light on the scriptures. All that we just read now, when you go read the spirit of prophecy, you see how bright it is, right? I know I highlighted some things and I didn't say nothing about them. But now you go into the spirit of prophecy and you see these things just, it, it, yeah, she just, it, it testifies of what we just read. Amen? So, the, I didn't highlight this part, but it says, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Right? So, let's read that quote from Signs of the Times, April 1. It says, Abraham lift up, lift his eyes to the mountains, and upon, and upon one beholds, what? He beholds the sign. Right? So, I know I have one, two, three here, but I'm saying, the third day is also this whole thing, right? Abraham beholds the sign. It's the midnight cry, right? Behold the bridegroom cometh. This is the message he, 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 he got. Then it says, he looks earnestly and lo, a what? There's your cloud. Just like Solomon, when he dedicated them, what came? At first, it was the cloud. Amen? Then it says, um... A bright cloud hovered over the top of Mount Moriah. Now he knows it is all a what? Terrible certainty and what? There's your revelation. No delusion when you come to the midnight cry. He knows that the voice is Christ. Yes. No. Amen. No delusion. Keep that delusion thought in mind because we'll come and we're going to see, as I'll say, that Pharaoh was deluded. Pharaoh was in delusion at this point. But we'll see. One, it, it's, it's, it's also the parable of the wise and foolish, right? So when you come here, Abraham is in no delusion. 
that this was the voice of God. Because why? He saw the Solomon. When the cloud came down, he, he was in no delusion. So he prayed. So what, what did Abraham do then? Line upon line. Abraham prayed from the time he saw that cloud to the time the angel stayed his hand. Amen. Right? So let's continue. It says, even now he did not murmur against God, but strengthened his soul by dwelling upon what? From this point on, did not our heart burn within us? Right? Because they were dwelling on what? On the evidences that God gave them. Right? So Abraham, dwelling upon the evidences of the Lord's goodness and faithfulness. This son should son had been unexpectedly given, and he and he and had not he who bestowed the precious gift a right to recall his own. Then faith repeated the promise. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. He went back to the old path. Amen. A seed numberless as the grains of sand upon the shore. Isaac was the child of a miracle. And could not the power that gave him life restore it? Looking where? Looking beyond that which was seen. Right? The Bible says he saw the cloud and he looked. That look was beyond. And we're going to see that. He didn't look at the present situation. He looked beyond. Right? And it says, Abraham grasped the divine word, accounting that God was able to do what? Raise him up even from the dead. When Abraham said to Isaac, my son, my God will provide a lamb, that was the revelation. Right there, he knew that God was able to raise up Isaac. Right? And he knew that God... When, I encourage everyone to read that chapter, the chapter on the temple cleansing, and the chapter on the Red Sea together. Right? And she says in, in this chapter in Patriots and Prophets to the end, she says, when Abraham said, my God um, will provide a lamb, she says, the angels now understood the plan of salvation. They didn't understand it until Abraham got the revelation. God, God, is, God is seeking to make us, what's the word? He's, he's giving us a high station. Angels are waiting for that revelation that we're going to receive. But when we receive it, then they'll understand it. And you know what? They'll go joyfully to their work in helping you. Right? This is what we must understand. We must believe in God's word. God's word is sure. Amen? So it says, um, he believed in the resurrection. So when we come to the midnight cry, the resurrection should be on our mind. The promises of God. Amen? Continuing on. And now, the last words of love were spoken. The last tears are shared. The last embrace is given. The father... Who? The Who's the father? God, right? Keep that in mind because you have to take that to heaven. The father lifts the knife to do what? To slay Christ. Amen? When suddenly his arm is stayed, an angel of God calls out to the patriarch, patriarch out of heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he answers quickly, here am I. And again, the voice is heard, lay not thine hand upon the lad, Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham saw a ram in the thicket, and quickly bringing the new victim, he offered it in the stead of his son. Can I get a point? That's the ninth hour. Yeah. That's the father and the son, their last, their, their last, their, year, their last, their yes. Lord. Amen. Right there, their last embrace, and then the father took a knife and slayed. Okay. So... This is, all, this is going to be our experience. We enter into the midnight cry, right? And just before the end is where now Satan is going to raise his hand to slay you. But we know it's the Father, right? This is, this is the Father permitting these trials because he permitted Abraham to get to that point, right? And when Abraham raised his hand, right, what? the angel came in. So right here at the dawn, an angel comes down to do what? To stay the judgment, Right? Amen. And then he puts... All right. So right here at the dawn, you have the ram in the thicket. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Continuing on. 
It says on Mount Moriah, God again did what? Renew his covenant, confirming with a solemn oath the what? What did, what did Solomon receive at the, at the fire? The blessings. The, she says the Lord confirmed the blessings to Solomon with the fire. So now Abraham, the covenant renewed, and what does he, what does he, what does he confirm? So what came down here on Mount Moriah? Fire. You don't have to see it. It's there. Right? And go to 1 Kings 17, 18. What comes down? Fire. Bring them all together. Abraham, the, the hand that stayed Abraham was the Lord. It was the fire. But it was a consuming fire to the ram in the thicket. Right? But it was to Abraham a blessing. Amen? Continuing on. It says the ram offered in the place of Isaac represented the son of, of God. Let me see the next quote. Right? I, I've, I've skipped that part. Sorry. Confirming the solemn oath and blessing to Abraham that his seed and to his seed. Right? So the next quote says, The ram offered in the place of Isaac represented the Son of God. So this is where Christ comes. Amen? Does Christ come at the dawn? Yes. yes, that's what he's teaching. Christ is coming to take your place. Amen? All right. So it says, Yes, it is. Amen. He said Abraham had two sons. Yes. The one by a bone and a cleaver. So when Christ is moved from the grave, the Son of God takes his place. Satan. Amen. He's going to take right? his place. Because Christ, Christ is, all right, Christ is that, Christ is Isaac. Yeah. And the hand is stayed, and then Satan has to take Christ's place, right? Amen. Amen. So, um, it says, the ram, was offered in, the ram offered in the place of Isaac represented the Son of God, who was to be sacrificed in his own stead. When man was doomed to death by transgression of the law of God, the father, looking upon his son, said to the sinner, Live, I have what? Christ is the scapegoat which the type represents. Right here. Christ took the place of the sinner. He was the type. Everybody follow? He was the type. But he's not the scapegoat. Right? He had to, by coming on the cross, he typified the work that could not say that Satan is also a son, and Satan is the one that takes the true place. Amen? Amen. Next quote. Abraham's great faith stands as what? Fire. Pillar of light. Illuminating the pathway of the servants of God in what? All succeeding ages. This experience, it ends with fire. And this whole experience then is a pillar of? Light, fire, amen. Yes, we're going, amen. So now let's go. Let's go to Exodus four, right? The Bible says, "And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my what? My firstborn. This is the this is Abraham and Isaac all over again. So in Egypt it was Abraham and and Isaac, right? So it says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Verse uh. Chapter 13 and verse 2 says, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is what? Mine. It is mine. Right? And if we claim to be a part of God's church, that, that it is mine. We are His. This is what He's teaching. So what is going to happen? What is God going to say to Christ? Take thy son, thine what? only son and do what put him in the midnight cry this is what's coming our way god is going to speak to because christ is our father amen and he's going to say take your son your only son so you must be a son amen all right let's continue on it says the dedication of the what i didn't i didn't see that before what did solomon do he dedicated the temple and what did the Lord do? He consumed it by fire. Amen? Praise God. I, I didn't see that before. Praise God, Rashad. Yes. It says the dedication of the firstborn or the dedication of the temple had its origins where? In the earliest times. God had promised to give the firstborn of heaven to what? To save the sinner. Our work, the reason why we go through this is so that God could save men. And this is what we, this, this is how we show that we love others. Amen. 
This is how we show that we have a love for souls. By submitting to being laid on the altar. Right? Because that's what Isaac did. Amen? So it said, God had promised to give the firstborn of heaven to, the, to save the sinner. This gift was to be acknowledged in every household by the consecration of the firstborn son. He was to be devoted to the priesthood as a what? A representative of Christ among men. All right. In, in the deliverance from Egypt, the dedication of the firstborn was again commanded. So God ties this dedication of the firstborn to the deliverance from Egypt. Everybody see, the temple is tied to the deliverance from Egypt. Mount Moriah is tied to the deliverance from Egypt. Amen? Continuing on. While the children of Israel were in bondage to the Egyptians, the Lord directed Moses to go to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me, and if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. How, was the, how did that play out on Mount Moriah? Put on your spiritual caps. How did that verse play out on, on Mount Moriah? That's the end of it, yes. Where, where was Pharaoh in Mount Moriah? At the end, yes. Okay. But throughout the whole thing, where was Pharaoh? It was Satan tempting Abraham. He wouldn't give him a rest. And the Lord says, let my son go. But he wouldn't give him a rest. Right? So the Lord says, I will slay your firstborn. Caught in the thicket. Amen? Let my son go. Yeah, Amen. Is, uh, oh, yeah, because yes, because Pharaoh was killing the heart of the earth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It says that Satan waged war with Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and I'm really happy for all these thoughts because these things are really deep. Amen. And the Lord is really opening up a lot of spiritual truths. And he's allowing us to see all truth in all scripture. Right? This, this is what he wants us to learn to bend our minds to see these varying um, themes in any way you open in the scripture. Amen? All right. So, um, next quote, DA 51, paragraph 5. It says, Thus, the law for the representation, presentation of the firstborn was made particularly what? Where does the word significant come from again? It's, it, it's, it's a sign. Right? When God calls for his firstborn, it's a sign, right? Then he says, while it was a memorial of the Lord's wonderful deliverance of the children from Egypt, it prefigured what? Okay, where do we see this, 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 this prefiguring of the deliverance? Ah, not a prefiguring, but this noticing of the sign. Daniel, the advent of Cyrus was a what? A There's the, the firstborn. The Lord dedicated his firstborn and Daniel saw it. And he knew it was time. It was a sign. Right? Because, what did he say? Let my people. That's what he's saying to Nebuchadnezzar. Right? And Daniel saw it and he knew it. Right? So, um, what does he say? Cyrus, um, I, I called thee, though thou had not won. I dedicated you. That's he dedicated him as his firstborn. Right? And he says, I, though you didn't know me, I did it. And once Daniel saw it, man, he was like, there's a sign. There's the Son of God. Amen. Right? And he knew, amen, behold the Lamb of God. And he knew it. And so what did Daniel do? He prayed. Solomon, what did he do? What did, what did Abraham do? Bring these stories together. You know, there was a nice little part I didn't pull out. It slipped me. But when you, when you, when you go up to the dedication of the temple, it says all the trumpeters did what? This is Daniel 3. Nebuchadnezzar is the opposite. When the image was read, all the trumpeters do what? They blew. And what did the people do? They bowed. But Solomon, when the trumpeters read, what happened? The people bowed. Same Christ and the true and the false. The, Lord has been, the, the types is really, really nice. 
all of what is going to happen in our time is there in the types. And the Lord is bringing us back. Moses and this is what he's teaching us now. We have to see it. Since Biden, we, ha we received that rebuke. And the Bible says, from Moses and all the prophets began he to open up what? What, what is he opening up to us? All, all scripture is given for instruction. instruction. Amen? Go ahead. Um, so that shows that the Sunday law is the, it's the counterfeit dedication, daily dedication. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. yes. In heaven, um, Christ was shown to be the Son of God. That was also the same thing that Satan revolted against it. Yes. yes. Amen. It basically yes. comes down to Sabbath and Sunday. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Praise God. So she says, It prefigure a greater deliverance to be wrought out in the only begotten Son. As the blood sprinkled on the doorpost had saved the firstborn of Israel, so the blood of Christ has power to what? Save the world. Christ. Christ has destroyed this. There is it. That's the spilling of his blood. So the breaking of bread Amen. has the power to save mankind. Amen. This is all he's teaching. Solomon, in his wisdom, in the rearing up of the temple, saw Christ. Amen. Right? He doesn't have to tell you that. He saw Christ. And he knew, he, knew, he knew of the work of Christ. But when Solomon fell away, what happened to the temple? Destroyed. Christ had to be broken to redeem Solomon. Right? Destroy this temple and in three days. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. Three decrees. Amen? They killed Christ three literal days. Right? The papacy, he destroyed the temple. Um, the 1260. Three messages. So at the end of the world, it's the same thing. We have to combine all these stories together and recognize that when you come to the midnight cry, the temple is going to be destroyed. The bread is going to be broken. Right? But Christ says in because Abraham knew of the resurrection right here. Abraham knew in three days. Because he, it says he looked at the things not seen. Right? He knew that in three days Christ was going to be raised up. Amen? Go ahead. So I was saying that he saw that because Isaac died the first day. Because it says, uh, from, um, he killed him in his heart, his heart. from day one. And then, and then on the third day. He was raised up. He was raised up. So that's, nice. Right there, that's nice. That's nice. Right Amen. Now you understand why Christ says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day Amen. and was glad. Amen. And he saw the whole thing. Amen. Right? He saw everything through that little experience. And she says, it's a pillar of light. Which means we could study that thing every single day and gain what from it? Light. Right? It's a pillar of light. That story. And you can't limit the symbols. Amen. Or you put out the light. Yeah. This is what you do. You, you cover it with a bushel. Right? Amen. So, the point I want to make is, uh, I'm bringing these two stories together. I want to show, I'm showing that Abraham's experience was about the temple. Right? He was rearing up the temple. Right? Because it was to reveal who at the end? Christ. But he was also destroying the temple. The temple of self. Yes. Right? Thy only son is self. As the only son we have. Amen. Right? And Christ is going to say, destroy that. And if you destroy that, and Christ is going to replace that with himself. Right? This is what he's teaching us. Christ is going to replace what we destroy with himself. The ram caught in the, in the thicket. Amen? But he's also going to put it on Satan. The ram caught in the, in the thicket. Because he has to go somewhere. Because when God made the world... Nothing was, I think everything was useful, right? Even today, everything is useful. When, when, when someone dies, they turn back into the dust and they fertilize the earth, right? That becomes useful. Nothing goes to waste. So someone has to take your sin, yeah. right? Someone has to take it. I had a hand. You? Yeah. And all scripture is pointing to the end. We see that the thicket is, is humanity. So the ram will be Christ's divinity caught in humanity. Oh. So now, Satan. pointing forward, oh, man. you'll see Satan caught in thicket. That's a nice thought. Yeah. He's going to be turned into flesh. Yeah. That's, a, that's a nice thought. Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. The Holy Spirit reveals the? Y'all got to understand that came from the Holy Spirit. Everyone needs to understand that. Right? These thoughts come from the Holy Spirit. And we have to cherish them. Every Sabbath we must get fresh bread. All right? Go ahead, Romario. Yeah, now what Rashad said, the thorns and the thistles came up because of sin. Mm -hmm. That is human thoughts, human theories, human philosophy. Amen. That Amen. Is, that is what the thorns and thickets is. And we rest the scriptures. That's what that is yeah. teaching. We rest God's word by binding it up in our thorns and our yeah. false. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, our thorns. false. So th 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 those who were caught among the thorns were caught among men, foolish yeah, men. Yeah. That's another symbol. Men who, who cared about the things of this world. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, praise God. Right? So praise our, God. Our false teaching makes the Bible not a thing to be touched. Yep. That's what nobody wants to touch the thorns. No. What did they put on Christ? What put on his head? Man's crown. Yeah. Not God's crown. They put their own depiction of what they think is a king upon him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? Praise God. So, but Jesus says, look and live. Touch it. I have the power to heal. Amen. Go ahead. Teach your, message. your message yes they put, they put ah let me show you how you are king yeah, yeah you're not a king this way you're a king that way let me show you the, how the two temple cleansing is the building of the temple yep yeah. yep the 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 amen binding the binding the yeah. the cords amen all right so now let's well, i'm almost to the end let's go to um, this next section the red sea so so we see that monk moriah for Solomon is the building of the temple. For Abraham is the building of the temple. Amen? And God was, the temple God was building through Abraham was the Jewish nation. Because in Isaac was the seed. That was the temple there. Right? All right. And once, once Abraham laid the wood and, and all that stuff, then God accepted his work. Just like Solomon. Once Solomon laid the stones and the wood, God accepted his work. Amen? But they're all typifying Christ. Right? So once Christ does his work in building the temple, then God is going to accept his work at the end, and then he's going to lay all the sins onto Satan. Amen. Right? Every man according to his just reward. Amen. We have to really understand the work of the Lord because when, the, when you go look at 1 Kings 18, the fire came down and licked up the, the dust, the wood, mm -hmm. and the stone. Mm -hmm. Elijah prepared that with his own hands. Yes. So exactly, yes. it will come. It, it they will left happen. their food. Yeah, amen. Yeah. And they walked with a The food was their own, yeah. the work of their hands. They left that, amen. right? So, so you have to really realize the voice of God that, like, yes. that even though amen. I've shown you these things, there's still some things that you have to put down. Amen. And now amen. let me show you how to teach, teach the, the message. He's the only one that can say that. Right? Let me show you how to teach the message. Amen. amen. And Jonah 4 shows that. Um, prophecy was was. Fulfilled. Fulfilled, but not in the way Jonah that, wanted it. Yeah, in, in his own mind, yeah, amen. the fire did, did um, fall down. Amen. I think one more thought in line of that. Mm -hmm. It's also showing you Christ and God. God has to destroy the wicked and this earth, and it's painful to him. Mm -hmm. That's Christ's work. Satan, amen. The, um, all the Esau, Cain, those are all the works of his hand. Yep. But what does he have to do with the fire? He yes. has to destroy it. He has to be yes. willing to to destroy it. Christ has, because that Christ made that. Because he made them. Christ created everything yeah, he and he has to be willing it. to destroy this. It's a strange act. He doesn't really want to do it. So if he has to destroy his work, what makes us think we don't have to destroy it? Oh man, have world. mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. God, yeah, oh, man, I don't think y'all are seeing what's happening and you have to walk in this light. Amen. The Lord is really opening up spiritual things. Amen. Right? He's allowing us to go anywhere in the scripture. And see light. Right? And we have... Now, now is the time. That's the sign. We really have to take advantage of it. Because Christ says, I'm going to leave. And who is he going to send? But what is the comforter coming to reveal? Deep things. If you not settle on this, these things, 
How is he going to reveal to you the deep things in this time? She said, Solomon saw that God was, um, that God was, 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 was wrapped up in the darkness. He saw the deep things. Right here, as soon as the cloud came down, he saw the deep things and he prayed. There will be a struggle for some to see how Cain is Christ. Yeah. Cain killing Abel is Christ killing something. Yeah. Something you have to. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to do because he's wrapped up in darkness. Amen. You know what's dark to everyone, which is bad things. It's light the to, to God's people. Light from it, Amen. And, but the, unless you have the Holy Spirit, you will not receive it. Yes. Uh, they're going to call you mad. Yeah. It, they're going to call you mad because what all they see on the surface is thou shall not kill. Abraham, what is, it, what is Satan accuse him of? So you call Christ a murderer? Yeah, didn't God say thou shall not kill? That, Abraham, the whole time is going, Satan is in his ears. You're going to break the commandment? Uh, you, you kept it all your life and now all of a sudden you're just going to break it? Because that's what the wicked is going to do. They're not going to understand when you say what you say. All right, so let's continue on. Exodus 14. Amen. Exodus 14, verses 8. says, And the Lord hardened Pharaoh, the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, and all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, besides uh, Piha, Pihaharoth. Hahiroth, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel, what? What does it say? They lifted up their, their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Go ahead, Quentin. So yeah. Christ is raising his right arm, and that's how they're delivered. Amen. They was also supposed to see if they were studying the story of Abraham. They should have saw right there the yes. man caught in the thicket. Yes. They were supposed to, but they yes. had no faith. Amen. They yes. Yes. They the, exactly. The right there. Because God tells the end from the, the beginning. Abraham the beginning. was the beginning. And they were to see it. Amen. All right. So continue on. It says, the children of Israel lifted up there. Aye. They, aye, without saying it, when Abraham lifted up his eye, what did he see? A cloud, the first time. Yeah. Right? So when they lifted up their eyes, what should they see? Aye. All right, continuing on. Verse 11. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us, dealt, dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not the word that we tell that that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, what? Why would he say that? What did the Lord say to Abraham? For now I know that thou fear me. Right? Moses understood. Right? But Moses typifies whom? Christ. Right? So Christ is right there with the understanding. How do we get it? By not murmuring. Because Moses says, stand still and what? See the salvation of the Lord. Amen. If we murmur, we won't see it. Right? This story is an object lesson. Yes, I know everybody crossed the Red Sea. But there are many in there that didn't deserve to cross the Red Sea. Right? The story is teaching, not all is going to cross at the end. Right? So we need to see that. Yes. By Amen. They're represented by Pharaoh. Yeah. All right? Verse 9. It says, And the angel of the Lord, the who? The angel of the Lord went before the camp of Israel, remove, which went before the camp of Israel, remove and went where? Behind them in a what? There it is. The cloud. Right? The cloud went up and it was light to the Israelites, but what? Darkness to the Egyptians. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now if you go to verse 24, I'm just going to skip through it. It says, And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, in the morning what? What is that? It's the dawn, right? It says, which, 
watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through what? Fire. Amen? Fire um, and of the cloud and trouble the host of the Egyptians. And verse 26 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine what? Hand over the sea, the high hand, right, Quinton? Right? High hand. Stretch thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And um, Job down to the last verse, he says, the bold part, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians where? In the midst of the, of the sea. So when Moses stretched out his hand, how does that typify Abraham? Yeah, this is him taking the ram in the thicket and slaying it, right? He doing that very work. So let us continue. Pa uh, Patriarchs and Prophets 283 Rochelle. I think I might go over a little bit. But yeah, yeah. Let me, I, I want to go. I, I can't stop. So it says, and now the Lord did what? I put that there because the Lord did what to Abraham? And David did what to Sol Solomon? He directed him. He gave him the pattern. That's what he teaches. He gave him the pattern, right? It says, the Lord directed Moses to turn aside into a rocky defile, and then camp beside the sea. It was revealed to him that Pharaoh would what? So Christ knows what's going to happen in the midnight cry. Right? But Christ is going to bring us in this rock and hard place anyway. Right? Because it's revealed to Christ that Satan is going to die. It is. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Satan followed him for three days. Right? Satan followed him into the sea. Yeah, basically. Yes. And he's going to follow him right to the cross. Right? So it says in the next quote, The Hebrews were encamped beside the sea, whose waters presented a seemingly what? The great gulf fixed. Right? Before them, while on the, on the south side were what? What did Ellen White say in that vision? On one side was what? The path. On one side was what? was the wall, and on the other side was the precipice. This is what this is teaching. On one side was the mountain, and before them was the chasm. Amen. So what was to the next side of them? A precipice. Yeah. They couldn't turn. And who was behind them? Because you couldn't turn back on the path. Because yep. yeah. he was going back to Egypt. Amen. Right? Bring all these things together. So, next quote. The wonderful pillar of cloud had been followed as a what? A sign. Right? As a sign of God to go where? At the midnight cry, when the cloud comes, what is the, what is the call? Go forward. Amen? But now, they questioned among themselves if it might not foreshadow some great calamity. For had it not led them on the what? Wrong side of the mountain into an impassable way. Thus, the angel of God appeared to what? To their what? Who was, not who was not on a delusion on the third day? Abraham. He saw the cloud, no delusion. The people here, they're delu they're, they, they think that God is deluded. So what does God do? Next quote. But now as the Egyptian host approached them, expecting to make them an easy prey, the what? The cloud, the cloud man. The cloud is what takes away that delusion. The cloudy column rose, it says, majestically, into the heavens, passed over the Israelites, and descended, descended between them and the armies of Egypt. A wall of darkness interposed between the pursued and the... So on the third day, when Satan was harassing Abraham, what did the Lord do when he saw the cloud? He put a wall between Abraham and... And instead of Abraham listening to the voice of Satan, he heard, that's the resurrection. That's what he heard. I am able to resurrect him, right? So the cloud makes that separation. It's the third angel, guys. This is what he's teaching. It's, this is the final work of the third angel. Amen? All right. It says, the Egyptians could no longer discern the camp of the Hebrews. Those who stay in that camp is going to be in terrible darkness. No discernment. And were forced to halt. But as the darkness of night deepened, the wall of cloud became a what? A great light to the Hebrews. Amen. Amen. Flooding the entire... Doing what? Flooding. Flooding. Flood of light. There's a flood of light here. The and then there's a flood of light at the dawn. Amen. And we'll see that. Amen. Flooding the encampment. 
with the radiance of day. Next quote. The psalmist describing the passage uh, of the sea by Israel sang, go down to the bow part. Thou what? Let us thy people how? Like, a, like Isaac to the altar. Amen. This is Christ. Christ led his people to the altar. Amen. Right? And who then is the knife? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. By allowing Pharaoh, the, the, Christ raised his hand. But, the, but what happens? The fire comes down and does what? The angel stopped the hand. The, the angel. The angel is the fire. Yeah. It says the angel of the Lord. That's the, the, it stops the hand of Pharaoh. Amen? All right, let's continue. Um, it says, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch. Oh, no, did I miss something? Yes, next bold part says, the light of, the light of God's pillar of fire shone upon the foam cap pillows, right? So here you have light in the beginning, light in the end, just greater light. It says, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of what? Fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. The mysterious cloud changed to a pillar of fire before their astonished eyes. It came to stop Pharaoh in his tracks. This is, this is the angel coming down to stay the knife. Everyone's following? Quentin, I'm over time. I need to, I need to finish. This last one says, hold your thought. We might take it at the end. It says, the Egyptians were what? Seized with confusion and dismay. Look at the meaning of seize. Down below. Suddenly caught in the thicket. Fasten with the cord. What did Isaac say to his father? Don't worry, father. Fasten the cord. Bound me. Right? So now the Lord, the cord that was around the Egyptians... When, when, when the Israelites walked into the sea, they were saying to Christ, bound me. They went on the altar. They, think about it. A wall of water from side to side. Man, you've never seen that before. It's a fearful sight. And she says, the path went into obscurity. They couldn't see the end. They couldn't see the end. Christ on the cross, right? He couldn't see the end. Amen. Yes, and the, but, in, but, you, but he says, go forward. Father, bound me. This is what you do by walking into the Red Sea. You're saying to Abraham, bound me. Right? But who's going to follow you? Satan followed Isaac. Isaac was bound, so Satan said what? Bound me. Right? He too was bound. Amen? So it says, <laughs> go back up to the quote. Amid the wrath of the elements in which they heard what? The voice of an angry God, they endeavored to retrace their steps and flee to the shore they had quitted. But Moses did what? Slay the ram in the thicket. Right? And pile up waters, and the pile up waters, hissing, rowing, and eager for their prey, rushed together and swallowed the Egyptian army in their black depths. Those who don't understand the deep things of God, the deep things of God is going to swallow them up. Pharaoh didn't understand what was taking place. Why? Because there was a cloud blocking his view. He didn't see the work that God did. And then when the cloud lifted, what? he just rushed on. Hastily rushed on, thinking he had the Israelites. Right? But God had one more, uh, one more plague. Right? The seventh one. That's the, the coming of Christ. So, um, this last quote, I really do like it. It says, the path where God leads, the way, the path where God leads the way may lie through the desert and the or Mount Moriah, or the cross, right? Or the fiery furnace, right? This is what he's teaching. The path where God leads may, may lie through the desert of the sea, but it is a what? It is a safe path. Amen? Yes, it is a safe path. What the Lord is doing, he's giving us a safe path. He's, he's trying to get us to trust in his word because he said it. Not because any man come and say anything, but because you studied and because you saw it and because you are willing to be bound and go to the cross for him. Not because any man say it's time to go to the cross because you're going to get down the cross and run because you, you would have realized, man, I didn't, I didn't know it was so hard. Right? 
God is really trying to solidify us in his word. And this rev the, these revelations that he's given us, I mean, the, the vast truths. He's opening up the storehouse and he's pouring out rich treasures from his storehouse. Now is the time to gather. He's opening up Moses and all the prophets. Light is streaming from the pages of God's word. And by God's grace, I pray that we can, when we, when we come here, like Mario says, we don't leave. What was the quote? That we should leave here with a change. With a change of heart, man. We, when we leave here, there should be a fire. Did not our hearts what? This is the midnight cry. Right? Did not our hearts burn within us while we talked with him, by the way? These thoughts that I've just put forth is only my testimony. It's only what I, I know for a fact that when others go in there, man, they're going to bring out some powerful truth, yeah. right? And each truth is designed to plant your feet on the firm platform because the path of God is a safe path. Amen? Yeah. All right, I pray that we are encouraged. This, I pray that we are encouraged to do this work. And I'll tell you this, if we go home and encourage ourselves and study when we come back here next Sabbath, everyone will have something to say when the preacher is preaching. Everyone will want to raise their hand and say, man, this is what the Lord showed me. Man, this is, man that lines up with that. Because you studied. Right? And, 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 and take that for what it is. When we sit here and we don't say nothing, it's a demonstration that we have not studied. You guys have to understand. It's a de Canada, Romari, and Rashad and I, we meet Mondays. No, Quinton, we meet Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. What do you hear when, when preaching takes place in here? Man, amen. Man, that's nice. Man, that teaches that. Because we study. You guys have to see it. Right? And, 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 I'm, and, and you guys notice the divide immediately. Right? Canard, Rashad, Romario, Quinton, and I study. Right? Which means... Everyone else who's not saying anything, what are they not doing? You may read your Bible. I'm not saying you, won't, you may not read your Bible. But are you learning? Are you studying? What does Satan use? The scriptures. Yeah, it, look, this is not the time for play. Life is at stake. The midnight cry is about to come. It's not the time. Right? It's not the I would not like to go forward and my wife is not by my side. I would not. I would not like to go forward and my children is not by my side. It's going to be a sad day. Christ does not want to destroy what he's created. This is what he's teaching. I don't want to see the family that, that, that I entered into create. Christ entered into the human family. Amen. He does not want to see it um, destroyed. And this is how I don't want to see. I would not want to see Michelle and Sinner and Sasha lost. No way. But if they don't study. I have to go forward. I have to do the strange act. I have to separate. You guys are following? This is serious. That, that is my, con it is very serious. It is very serious. And each one of us here need to pledge. You know what I praise God for? I have a closet now. I never had a closet I could have gone into and prayed. I, I wake up, uh, yesterday I took a shower and I came out and went to get some clothes. I'll be like, wait, I just walked in here. And you know what? I shut the door and I pray because I have a closet now. Look, the Lord is trying to save us and he's doing everything he can. Everything. And it's my prayer that every one of us here under the sound of my voice be saved. But I'll tell you this. If you don't work, you don't eat. The bread is going to be broken here. And if you don't work, you will not eat. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much food is there. You'll watch it and you'll starve. This is what it's very serious. It is very serious. I make this appeal. It is very serious. Pray for me because this appeal is for me. And if I come next week looking all slacking and lackadaisical, not keeping up with this appeal, rebuke me. This is what God is calling for, right? And if you feel rebuked right now, praise God, right? But if I do the same thing, rebuke me. And if I don't accept your rebuke, there's nothing you could do. Just pray and keep going forward. Right? Just pray and keep going forward. This is for all of us. I praise God for what he's opening up. I love to see these things in the Bible. Now, I mean, you have no idea. And you should love it too. Every one of you, every one of us, you should love it 
too because it is beautiful. It is glorious, right? And, and I, don't, I don't study as much as Kunar. Kunar is home all day, right? I don't study as much as him. So just imagine those of us who are home all day, what we could do with the time we have and study. But the, these little few moments that I get, this is what the Lord reveals to me. Imagine what you could do with the time that you have. Just imagine. Wake up and study God's word. Amen? Amen. 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 Shall we close with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for, for this blessed Sabbath day, for this time where we can break bread with you, Lord, where we eat of the old store and then you give us of the new. Father, we thank you for the revelations that you are giving us in your word, preparing us, Lord, for what is ahead. And so, Lord, we pray that each one of us will leave here with a fire burning within us, Lord, ready to go back and to understand and to, to search and, to, and to, to, to learn of the deep things in which you are opening up even now. For, Lord, it'll be even deeper at the midnight cry. So we want to thank you uh, for this blessed fellowship. We pray that you'll forgive us, Lord, for the failures you know, in failing to study and failing to spend time in your word. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.